Just in general, how do you feel about the condition of the young team? I mean, I feel like they're ready for practice. Now, obviously, we're a long ways away from being in game shape, you know, but as strength and conditioning coaches, our job first and foremost is prepare these guys to practice at the level at which Coach Morris practices at. You know, that practice in turn with uh, additional conditioning of here and there will get them ready for the game. So I feel good about them being in practice shape, but we still have a ways to go before they're in game shape. Did you enter the summer with certain objectives? I mean, kind of like the game plan for what you wanted to do. Can you talk about that? Well, it's uh, not really my objective. You know, we do a great job as a staff, you know, of sitting down with not only Coach Morris, but Coach Chavis and Coach Craddock. You know, they do a post-spring evaluation. You know, that's really our blueprint of what we're trying to accomplish over the summer. You know, we sat down with each side of the ball and went through each player individually and what their individual goals would be for the upcoming season. You know, we, we talk about beginning with the end in mind. So we wanted to know where we were at that time, where we wanted these guys to be by fall camp. And then we re reverse engineered our way, you know, to get there the best we can. What are some of the players that have stuck out in, in the off-season workouts? As far as? Progressing from where they were in spring to now? I mean, you can go down the list uh, at each position and, you know, highlight guys, you know, changes, whether it be gaining weight, losing weight, transforming fat into muscle, you know, but I guess I would have to say the biggest gainers uh, throughout this off-season process would have to be, first of all, Dalton Wagner. When we met him in, in January, he was 275 pounds. He's walking around today at 302. You know, it's feeling good, looking good, and, and he's got more confidence than anybody in this room. You know, Jonathan Nash was a guy we met January, weighed in at 166. Now he's at 190 pounds, and he's faster than ever. You know, he's throughout gaining where we, sorry, we never want to put weight on the player if it's going to make him lose a step. You know, the weight that they gain is going to be more force that they apply to the ground that's going to make them a lot faster, a lot more explosive, and able to make big plays come Saturday this fall. And then another guy I have to highlight that was a big gainer was Cameron Curl. He weighed in at 187 in January. Now he's walking around at, at 201. He's uh, I mean, he's another guy that gained a lot of weight, put on a lot of muscle, and he's moving around a lot better than he did back in January. As far as the biggest losers throughout the process, obviously two guys to really highlight. First of all, Johnny Gibson Jr. He's a guy that weighed in in January at 345. He weighed as much as 348 at times. He's walking around today at 319, and he's looking looking lean and mean, and he's able to move a lot better, able to bend and able to, to – his conditioning level has raised tremendously from uh, when we saw him in January. And another guy is Jalen Mary. Uh, he started weighing in at 345 also, and now he's walking around today at 316. So a guy that's lost 29 pounds and moving a lot better, feeling a lot better, and those guys are able to – to sustain, you know, adequate conditioning to run Coach Morris's style of offense, which is, the, well, I guess, my job. So. Seems like the last year's team had an inordinate amount of <coughs> injury. Is it that get researched? And if you all, you know, trying to look at things maybe to correct some of the problems they have with so many injured, you know, foot injuries, broken feet last year. Okay, yeah, we kind of looked into that. Just, I mean, and you know, foot injuries can can happen because of a number of different reasons. So not necessarily understanding what they did from a training standpoint, but just know that that's something that has been an issue in the past. So we have implemented things within our off-season training program to where our cool down is what we call the barefoot cool down to where the guys are doing a series of movements where at the end of the workout, we take their shoes off and make them do a series of movements barefoot. You know, as well as that within the workout, we do, uh, I guess what we call barefoot injury prevention exercises. So on unstable surfaces, whether it be an Eric's pad or a BOSU ball, you know, making those tiny, small, intrinsic muscles do what we call proprioceptive. You know, so we, if you think about a shoe, a shoe has a nice hard sole on it. So it inhibits your, your body, your foot's natural ab ability to proprioceptive. So by removing that shoe, removing that, that stable surface, putting on something unstable, we're causing, we're training those tiny, small muscles. So is it going to fix the problem? I can't stand up here and say that. But it is, we are being proactive in how we approach it. True, how do you think the old linemen have done overall in the conditioning program, given you know, you're trying to get to where these guys have a wider stance based on what they're going to do in Coach Morris's offense? I think that they've they bought in. They've truly committed. And, I mean, honestly, that group, 
uh, led by Yelda Froho, who's a phenomenal leader, one of the best leaders I've had the opportunity to work with. You know, he, he brings it every single day. You know, he demands so much from that group just so it makes our job easy as coaches. You know, so when you have a guy like that leading that group, you know, and, and really demanding their best every single day, you never, you don't want to let that guy down. So that's really raised the bar across the across the board for everybody in that offensive line room. And you know, yeah, it was it was difficult for them to adjust to in the beginning, but they've slowly but surely made progress. You know, we had our conditioning test the last week of the summer, and all of those guys made it. You know, when they made it, we all celebrated just like we won a national championship just because those guys invested, you know, changed their bodies, changed their mindsets, and truly committed to our standard, which is best, in order to, to be where they are today. What about with that conditioning test um, cover? Like, was it a mile run or sprints or what was it? Uh, it was a what we call a 300 yard shuttle. It was three 300 yard shuttles back to back to back, you know, and then I mean, for someone who's never run one, it's, it's extremely difficult. And even for a 300 pounder, it's still extremely difficult. But the thing is, like we knew that going into it, you know, they hadn't ran it all summer, but you know, that was our test at the end. So for those guys to, to encounter something that was brand new to them, you know, putting your best effort forward, you know, they were all able to, to, to overcome it. Have either of the quarterbacks taken ownership of the team, stepped up their leadership this off season? Uh, either of I mean, give me an example of who you mean either or. Just um, leading everybody. Well, I mean, those guys, they, they do a great job of leading in their own ways. I can't identify just one guy who's stepped up and taken ownership just because, I mean, they all have, at different points of the summer have, have had to take the reins and, and, you know, have had to get each side of the ball, you know, I guess on the right track. But for one guy to say, say he separated himself, no, I can't do that. And plus, that's not my job. Too far. Remember in spring, uh, coaches wanted Cole to lose a little bit of weight. Where does he stand going into camp? Uh, <laughs> right now, he weighs 258 pounds. You know, but really, uh, with Cole Kelly's training throughout the summer, our focus was his core. You know, his core strength. You know, being such a tall, long guy. You know, we really want to emphasize. You know, his core strength because anything that you try to build on top of anything that it doesn't have a strong core, it won't sustain. You know, I gave the analogy of you know having. A, a strong upper body and a strong lower body with a weak core is like having two pieces of stainless steel connected with aluminum foil. So you want to be your strongest in the middle. And so that's really been our biggest focus with Cole and not just um, not just really just addressing his weight and being the weight release and saying, hey, I need you to weigh this much today. Because if you train at, your, at the standard, which is best every single day, you bring it every day, then the weight will take care of itself. You know, Michael Petway is kind of a physically impressive guy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, has he stood out to you a little bit in workouts? Absolutely. Well, Michael Petway, uh, he actually dropped. Let's see here. Petway, he actually went from 224 to 219. His body fat, however, went from 11.3% down to 7%. So a guy that really transformed his body, you know, and already a good looking guy to start off with. So the training that they did here before, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to stand up and say that we built any of these players. They had a great program before. Those coaches did an outstanding job of, of developing these guys. So all we did was simply come in and introduce a new training style and try to enhance what was already built. You know, so for him to transform within a seven month period and drop 4% body fat and keep his weight the same is, is a, really a credit to his work ethic and what he invested over the off season. What was the focus and transformation from the running backs? Okay, uh, give me an example. Well, just like Devon drop weights and mm -hmm. guys, just how, how you guys handled those guys in training. I mean, with that, our, our focus really wasn't for him to drop weight. You know, we, our focus was really for him to transform. And he's another guy that saw big gains. You know, going from 15.5% body fat down to 11%. You know, that's another outstanding job and a really a tribute to his work ethic. But he is a guy that stepped up and, you know, and, and, and became more of a leader by example throughout this process. And he's an extra guy staying out there extra to do extra core work extra footwork drills, extra whatever it is to, to be able to, when he takes the field this fall, that you're going to see the best version of Dev Wild Waver. You know, so um, he's now at 209, so about six pounds difference from what he was in January, but he moves completely different from what he did in January also. How's Jared Cornelius responded from his injury? Mm -hmm.
Uh, he's, he's coming along very well. You know, very, I'm very impressed with Jared Cornelius because of the simple fact we weren't able to, to train him when we first got arrived on campus because, I mean, he was still within the rehab protocols with athletic trainers. So we went through spring ball and then we were able to train him once spring ball ended, you know, because that's when he fully got released. So you're talking about a guy who's made his games essentially from, from, from May up until today. But he's a guy that, you know, coming off of the Achilles surgery, now he's cleaning 300 pounds, you know, now he's squatting close to 400 pounds, you know, so, and uh, he's moving, moving very well. And his, his vertical jump went up, uh, I want to say about three or four inches, I want to say. Did he clear full go then for full contact? When he um, that, that's an athletic trainer question, but if you ask me what he looks like within training, then he looks, he looks really good to me. On the same track, Corlin Jackson, can you update us on how he's coming along? He's another guy that we didn't get to, to get a chance to work with during uh, the winter conditioning program. So we really got him post spring ball. And, you know, he's made some games also, you know, and really getting him to just, you know, I guess trust the, the stability and everything. You know, that's one of this hurdle, obviously, he has to overcome. But, I mean, he's, he's trained every day at a high level. Let us know when something's bothering him to where we can make modifications. But those are very few. But uh, he's a guy that, that, that brings it every day. What about the freshmen? I imagine it's a shock jumping into a college weight program for them. How they adjusted? And <coughs> Surprisingly well. You know, this is a, a group of, of mature young men. I would, you know, obviously highlight, you know, guys like Solid Robinson. You know, he's emerged as the leader of that group whenever they're in orientation, freshman orientation, and they may be running a few minutes behind to a lift. He's, he'll be the guy that, hey, coach, they still, still have us over at orientation. Uh, is it okay if we're a few minutes behind? And, you know, just that level of maturity. You know, obviously being a coach's kid, he understands the game. And, you know, he's trans his transition has been a smooth one. But also guys that have been here since January and Isaiah Nichols and Bumper Poole, those guys have seen significant games within within the program and, you know, hadn't showed up on any list. And for those are guys to, to essentially be seniors in high school and let alone learning everything their freshman year in college, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between those guys and guys that have been there for two or three years. Uh, you pointed out a couple of guys on the body fat drop. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other examples of that? Because we kind of went through the weight guys, but what mm -hmm. about body fat guys? Oh, yeah. I would say the biggest changes, obviously, outside of Michael and, and Delvoy, the biggest change that we had was Brian Wallace. Brian Wallace is, is a guy who weighed 323 pounds in January, and he weighs 320 pounds today but he dropped 5% body fat. So he essentially lost 16 pounds of fat and put on 15 pounds of muscle. You know, so, well, 14 pounds of muscle, sorry about that. But uh, his body, if you look at him, the before and after pictures of him, he looks completely different. So, um, does that answer your question? His, his body fat went from what to what? 25.5 to 20.3. I saw you had a lot of numbers there in front of you. Could you get score some of the line, <laughs> offensive linemen, like weight drop or weight gain and body fat? Well, a lot of those guys are essentially you know, close to where they were. You know, obviously, you know, Kirby Adcock put on a few pounds. He he dropped down to 260 uh, in April. You know, he came off uh, a sickness or whatever. And, and so we got him back up to 280 pounds. You know, the Ty Clary, he's now up to 288. You know, he'll be 290 by the time we report on, on Thursday. Uh, Shane Clinton's up to 302. He's put together a solid summer. If I had to pinpoint one guy who's really made made gains across the board in that old line group, uh, Shane Clinton would be at the top of that list. Yo DeFroho, you know, he's a guy that was was a was a complete. If you had to tell me to describe you an SEC offensive lineman, uh, it'd be it'd be Yo DeFroho. So a guy that when we came in was already pretty well developed at 315 pounds and 23. 0.3% body fat, you know, now he's he's 310, you know, and walking around at 21% body fat. So a guy that's already, you know, reached pretty close to where he'll be uh, at his peak, you know, make that significant of a game is really impressive and speaks to what he's done over the course of the all season. Uh, like we already talked about Johnny, Tyler Hall's at 295, Dylan Hayes is at 294, RG Horn is at 290, uh, the Dion Malone is at 293, and uh, Silas Robinson is at 304. You know, down from 321 when he arrived in, in June or May, and then uh, Dalton Wagner, like I said, is up to 302, 
from Brian Wallace is still 320. How about Colton Jackson? I don't think you mentioned him. Yeah, he's at, still right around 300. So he's he's fluctuating between 300 and about 302. Is it, has his body fat changed significantly? Uh, it's it's close to the same. You know, he's not he wasn't an overly fat guy to begin with, so he's right there at that close to 20 percent mark. What about speed gains? Do you guys track that? Uh, we do. Speed. We don't run 40s. We run 40s in the winter. I don't feel comfortable running it in the summer just because you run the risk of pulling the hamstring injury. And the last thing I want to tell Coach Morris is that I, I, I a guy's out for six weeks because I wanted to see how much he gained in the 40-yard dash. But we do measure speed. Obviously, we have the, the catapult GPS system. You know, so we track uh, our speed in miles per hour. You know, it's not the uh, it does it eliminates the error of, of human error with a uh, hand time and a stopwatch because we have a satellite up in space that tells us how fast you're running. Who, who, who are the fastest guys in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can give out that information. It might help other teams game plan for us. Okay. Can you say what the fast? You don't have to name, but like.